team, everybody. Uh, just going to clear chat out here. Uh, I'm just going to do a uh, quick little sketch for you here. Um, just because uh, it's a nice way to unwind after uh, after a stream. Um, you may notice that you can see sort of my Photoshop uh, window here, but not uh, uh, any of the tools or anything else. Just the just the uh, just the piece that I'm working on. Um, that's a weird thing with OBS, and uh, I went on I went on the forums, I went on Reddit today trying to figure out what to do, and uh, it looks like my only options are either monitor capture or turn change the settings on Photoshop so that it doesn't use my um, my graphics card to run, which it's not going to work for me. That's not going to work for me. Uh, and the monitor capture leaves a lot of like ghosting and trails and stuff uh, on my laptop. So, oh well, it is what it is. Um, but I hope you guys will stick with me. Uh, you can still see what I am doing, hopefully. Let's just uh, give that a test here. Yeah, that shows up. So... So uh, I am using Photoshop. Um, this is Photoshop CS6. Oh, let me just actually tweet that I'm online. Uh, I'm using Photoshop CS6 uh, on Windows 8.1. And we're just going to do something really basic. I've got a uh, basic brush here. Oh, let me actually update my stream title. That would be good. Because we are not playing Chrono Trigger anymore. Whoops. Post stream sketch session. That is drawing hashtag digital. Illustration. Uh, playing creative. Done. Uh, so I'll have to correct that on the VOD as well. But uh, anyway, uh, thanks for coming by, those of you who are watching. Um, Let's get started. So I have uh, just filled in the background with an off-white color. Um, I'm using a red uh, today, sort of a reddish violet, um, just because uh, it's nice sometimes to paint on something that's off-white. Um, it's, it's just a little bit more relaxing, a little less harsh on the eyes sometimes. Um, I find it easier to paint with. Uh, so today, let's just see what we do. We might do a face like last time. We might do something different. See how we're feeling. Um, so I'm just gonna start out by kind of sketching in some basic shapes here. All right. So what I'm actually gonna do is we're gonna back up a little bit and I'm going to set my brush opacity to 50% while I'm just roughing in the edges here and I'm going to make my brush a little wide um, just to kind of feel things out a little bit so uh, I'll go back through and erase some of the lines that I'm making here, uh, but I'll leave some in because uh, I kind of like how that looks. And actually, in uh, my art history classes, there's actually a name for uh, for this. It's uh, got a, uh, an Italian name. They're called pentimenti, which is uh, little thoughts. 
Isn't that kind of nice? You actually see that in um, like uh, Renaissance painters' paintings. If you look at that under like infrared light, you can see like where their uh, brush strokes were that they painted over afterward and things of that sort. So here I'm just kind of feeling out the shape of the face. We've got already managed to get the uh, sort of the curve of the the chin in here. It uh, faces have kind of a wedge shape to them. They're generally wider at the top than they are at the bottom. Um, generally speaking, you're always going to have variations and stuff. I put in the trapezius muscles here. Sort of imagining that this person might have her hand on her hips or something it seems to be where this is going, but we won't see that because we're just focusing on the bust for now. The well, not even the bust, just the face, just a hint of musculature and uh, position here. So the cheekbones would come in. Uh, sorry, the chin, the collarbones would come in like this if you could see them, but we're not going to be able to make them out too much on this picture, so we're just gonna. Erase that a little bit. Make that nice and light. <sighs> All right. So here we'll start just kind of roughing in the different parts of the face, and I'm going to go very gently now. So something that I that a lot of artists do, and that I used to do uh, a lot before I did some life drawing classes, and and uh, had this pointed out to me. Um, I should say, but before I had this pointed out to me, because it doesn't really matter whether you take life drawing classes or not. Like, uh, I don't want to be kind of elitist about that. Like, that's lots of people uh, are really good artists who've never been to art school, and um, it doesn't really matter. Art school is good for lots of things, but it is not absolutely necessary for learning how to do art. But anyway, before it was pointed out to me, I used to put my eyes, you know, very high. Like, I would draw a face like this, and then I put my eyes, like, up here. Right? And that is not correct. That is uh, very odd. And you see it makes the forehead look incredibly small. And the eyes are just way too high on the face. Uh, and it makes the face itself look very, very long. And there's a reason for that, and the reason is when we, as human beings, are looking at a face, we see the eyes as being kind of higher up on you know the part of the face that we see because we kind of we read the forehead as there, but we don't often pay a lot of attention to it. And so the part of the face that we pay attention to is sort of below the hairline. It's this part here. But actually, if you pay attention to the whole head, you notice um, if we draw a line down the center here, and we draw a line across the center of the whole face, this is where the eyes go. You go halfway, and this is going to be sort of a rule of halves, you go halfway down the face from the very top of the head, halfway down, that's where your eyes go. You go, you take the bottom half and you divide that in half again. And that's roughly where the bottom of your nose will go. I'm just going to rough in a tiny little nose here. Make that a little broad. Broad nose. It's so just a drawing of the outline of where the shadow will be. You take this distance from the bottom of your nose to the bottom of the chin and you divide that in half again and you get where the mouth goes and here we're going to give them a little bit of a cupid's bow lip just a hint of a smile here and some dimples not this way and this will be the chin down here and we can even make that a little bit uh, lower if we like to. And of course, these are just rough proportions as well. Like, you're always going to have variations. 
Um, that's one of the things that makes people look distinct is how they vary from this pattern. Um, so you don't have to be super exact like that. You know, you, you noticed I didn't take out a ruler and measure like exactly halfway down the face and halfway down from there. It's just kind of you know it's, it's rough. It's it's you know about where it looks right. Um, and as you draw, and as you look at people's faces, and as you start to see that when you look at people's faces, um, you'll start to sort of get a feeling for where that is. So what I'm going to do here to kind of fill in where the eyes go, uh, I'm gonna draw edge of the nose here maybe. The nose is kind of a triangle. Um, we come down here and we give them like the, the filtrum, that's the name of that split uh, uh, underneath your nose before the lip begins. It's called the filtrum and that starts helps you start to shape our lips. So you've got this divot here and then you've got one curve of the lips of the upper lip. You've got the other curve of the upper lip. And then you can kind of give them their lower lip, just a little bit of shadow here. If I were to go even more abstract with this, I could say that what we've got here is a is a is a pentagon. You've got one, two, three, four, five sides, and I can do that up here to show you one, two, three, four five sides and I draw the shape of the lips in here and I can just bow these out and you can see that's pentagon um, you can say the shame for the shape of the mouth itself as well uh, it's pentagon so if we draw like a, a smile I tend to have sort of a pentagonal shape as well, or uh, even if we were to be like, oh, this is a this is a shout, right? And a lot of us have watched anime. We see these sort of abstracted shapes as well. This is how you kind of can plan those out. But anyway, um, so pentagons. Back to sort of positioning things on the face. Uh, if you'd follow this eye line out to the edges of the face, this is going to be the middle of the eyes. It's also going to be the top of the ears, more or less. You can draw the ears in like so. And the ears are spirals. You know, they're We've got some detail, but we're not going to put in too much just yet. They're just there. What I'm going to do here is decide on where my brows are going to go. We're going to go kind of thin brows on this one, I guess, with a little hook here on the side to indicate where the the tissue on the orbit of the eye kind of ends. There's a sort of a crease there. And we'll arch this one even more. Once again, we're just kind of roughing this in. Um, now, I'm going to put the pupils, the uh, sorry, pupils, not pupils, the uh, irises roughly here and here. I draw my eyes generally as sort of three 
lines. Give her a little bit of a winged eyeliner kind of look here. Now, something to think about when you're putting when you're placing eyes. Um, your eyes, if you take this length here, so from the corner of your eye to the other corner of the eye, uh, you can divide the face up with that, you know, horizontally with that length. So just like we divided it vertically, you know, in half and then in half again and in half again, if you go horizontally, you can use the width of the eye. So your eyes have a width, and from one corner of the eye to the other of the corner of the eye is another eye width. It's the same It's the same uh, width. And if we were to be a little bit more precise about this, which I was not here, and you should be able to fit in almost a whole other eye on either side of your eyes. So there are in total five eye widths across the face, generally speaking. More or less, give or take, you can adjust that. Um, but if you're ever drawing and wondering, like, why do my, why does my character, why does this person look, you know, like sort of cross-eyed, or why are their eyes too sort of wide set? It's possible that you've put too much space in between them. You know, it should be about roughly an eye. Same if they're too close. If you can't fit another eye in between them, um, you know, consider moving them apart slightly. I'm just going to sort of figure out roughly where the hairline is going to be on her. So down right about there. We won't worry about this too much yet. But we'll rough it in as we go. This is not really intended to be sort of a super precise tutorial or anything. I'm just kind of biding my time here. But since People like to hear you talk when you're streaming. I uh, thought I'd talk about kind of what I'm doing here. So we've got this going on here, and I'm going to start to erase some of these lines. Clean these up a little bit. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller now. And I'm going to come in and actually just go ahead and do the eyes here. The eyes are some of my favorite parts of an image to do. I'm going to uh, get the pupil here, or iris rather. Another helpful sort of rule of thumb um, is to uh, to make your character uh, look like they're looking in the right in this you know in the same direct both of their eyes are looking in the same direction. You give them approximately symmetrical um, amounts of white space. So like if this white space on this corner of the eye is bigger than this one, you do the same. This side here should be bigger than this side here on this eye uh, in terms of distance from the corner of the eye to the to the uh, iris. I'm actually gonna come in and bop that out a little bit. Don't be afraid to use your eraser to shape things. Um, that is something that I have learned uh, in doing portraits and things like that, uh, that your eraser, you can actually use your eraser to draw 
that it's not just there to correct mistakes and whatever. And actually using it strictly to correct mistakes uh, can be a bit of a crutch sometimes. I'm just going to lightly darken this and uh, sort of give this a little bit more definition on the upper lid here. Put in the tear duct right here at the corner of the eye. Even smaller and a little bit of this fold right there. Again, I'm rounding these out, but you can tell that they're not like perfectly smooth. You can still make your eyes look kind of you can give them an almost sort of graphical abstracted quality and make them sort of angular. It can be very striking. I'm gonna go ahead and give her a little bit of eyeliner on either side here. Same thing, I'm gonna put the little Uh, indication of the, the tear gland in there. And I'm going to broaden my brush just a little bit to bring in this sense of uh, shadow for the lower lid. And I'm not actually going to connect these um, because our brains will kind of fill in the gap for us. And even if this person in real life were to wear eyeliner that would go all the way around the eye, um, it can be helpful to kind of leave this open because it will look a little bit like it's reflecting light. Um, if you're going through and fully rendering this in, you know, painting and, and whatever, you can probably uh, give it a bit more, you know, connection to this other side. But uh, generally, you'll leave this kind of open. Now, we'll zoom in even closer here. Is my favorite part doing the irises. So you can make your eyes look really, really striking and lifelike with um, shading, and it's not that there aren't. It's not that complicated to uh, to do. Just gotta practice a little bit and. Uh, I may have made, looking at the preview on the side, I may have made uh, my irises just slightly too big, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, so, a thing to remember about your eye is that it's got shadows on it. Like, even though they're white, you know, the, the whites of the eye are white, they are still in shadow. Uh, shadows are still cast on the eye because it's a round object. And shadows are also cast Oh, so in chat, uh, Grimau is saying that's usually where she stops with uh, the darker part of her eyeliner too. Um, so I guess that's something I kind of picked up subconsciously just looking at people, but it's uh, it's yeah, they stop right around in there it it, uh, it helps I think make this part of the eye look like it's lit you know it's sunlight or light is falling on it and reflecting uh, why are eyes my favorite I don't know they uh, they just it's something I've practiced a lot and it feels really relaxing to draw them I'm kind of drawn to eyes to begin with uh, in other people's work and uh, in real life as well, my eyes eyes are some of the first things I look at uh, on a person. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adding some shadow to the iris. It's a common makeup technique to play with light. Yeah, and light is like a huge part of, of drawing and stuff as well too, so there's a lot of commonalities there. Um, Actually, you, uh, Grimau, Cassandra, introduced me to uh, makeup tutorials on YouTube, and they are so similar to um, exercises and stuff that we would do in figure drawing uh, that <laughs> it's, it's really quite something. Um, I'm going to knock this out a little bit more here, but um, just to... 
because I want to come in here and sort of have a little bit more control over this shadow. Um, but yeah, so as I was saying, the the eye, the upper lid. First of all, you'll notice that you don't see the whole iris. If you draw in the whole iris inside the eye, it's going to make the person look like they're surprised. I'll show you here. So if we draw an eye, if we draw the iris like so, that looks fine. But if we draw an eye, and then we draw the eye, the entire iris within, you know, between the eyelids. It looks like their eyes are open wide, and they're surprised by something, or are fearful. Um, so generally speaking, you want the eye to contact, at the iris to contact and be covered by at least the upper lid, and sometimes even to gently sort of rest on the lower lid as well. Um, here we haven't done that because we're sort of looking up and forward. But um, that's something to remember because if if you if you uh, don't have them sort of touching the lids, they can look they can look quite agitated. Um, but yeah, so the the upper lid here goes over the eye. The eye is in three D space. The eye is a is a round thing, so it, there's a shadow being cast on it. And here on the lens, which is over your iris, there's a shadow being cast there as well. So that's even before we draw in the pupil. We'll draw in that pupil now. And it's just a dark space here. And we'll actually darken that shadow over the top even more. So you can see I'm actually sort of connecting this line of the pupil with uh, with the, the edge of the iris here. And we'll come over here and do the same thing on this side. We can always come back in and erase uh, a little bit if we want to uh, brighten these up. So we'll make this pupil nice and dark, somewhere over here. And again, if you can kind of make them symmetrical between the two, it will look like you're not like sort of staring cross-eyed or anything like that. Uh, we'll just bring that shadow in like so. Now we make a big decision here. We decide where our light is coming from. Is it coming? Is our light source up here and shining down, or is our light source, you know, over here and shining this way, or is it even? over here and shining this way. I think because of the way I've already shaded the philtrum down here by the lips, you can see I drew the line really dark on this side and not very dark on this side. It looks to me like we've already got suggestion of the light coming from this way, sort of overhead and down to the sides, sort of this direction. So we're going to go with that. Uh, that tends to be the way I draw my light anyway, just naturally when I'm not even thinking about it because I'm left-handed and that's just kind of what happens. Um, why is that important? Well, it's because it's going to determine where our shadows in are here. So our shadow is going to be pretty dark from our lid. Let's go ahead and we'll just go gently, 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 gently. And I'm even going to go down and take our opacity of our brush down to 20%. I'm just going to gently start out dark and get gently lighter as we go down from one side of the iris toward the bottom. And we're going to brighten out a little bit off center is where we're going to finally get sort of white. 
And we're going to come in and we're going to do sort of the same thing on this side, but we're going to stop a little earlier. So we're going to dark and then brighter, 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 brighter. And we'll leave this spot right here bright. Come over and do the same thing on our other eye. So dark. Down, 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 down. Stop off center. Dark. And then come down and stop a little off center here. So I've already made this one slightly darker than this one, so I'm going to come back here and do a little bit more. So you can see already that this highlight here, and we've not even drawn in the highlight yet, but this brighter portion is where the light, our light source is up here and shining this way, this way. Um, so that's, it's shining through and hitting this side of the iris, shadowing this part because our eye is, our lens is round. Uh, and we've got the shadow from the from the eyelid as well. I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit more shadow on this side, on the eye itself. Um, similarly over here. So now we've got that going on. Um, Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my eraser and I'm going to draw in a highlight. So the light source is coming from the top, going down this way. Where it first hits, the eyelid itself casts a shadow, and then where the light itself first hits the iris, you come down here and you make a little blob. And you can kind of indicate where the shadow from the eyelid is falling by making one side sort of straighter. So you've got your little blob of highlight there. And we do the same thing on this eye. You put it in roughly the same place because the light source is the same for the two eyes. And it's you know, far enough away that they're not the reflections are not going to appear super different in the two eyes. Um, and you can always see that they're not exactly the same because I'm drawing freehand, and you don't want them to look exactly this. Like it's okay if they don't look exactly the same because again, our eyes looking at this picture are going to um, are going to f put it together that oh, this is the same light source if they look similar enough. And we're going to read that. We already read this now as being wet and round and with shape and definition. Um, we see this now as being sort of globular, which is what our lens is in front of our eyes. And now we come in and we cheat a little bit to do the detail. So I'm going to make my brush nice and small. I still got it on like 20% opacity. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to draw. I'm borrowing a trick from some animes where they draw a little line around the center of the iris. I'm going to make it dark and gets lighter, but I'm going to make it kind of blobby. I'm just going to turn that opacity back up to 50% here because I want to add some blobs and jaggies and things. And my brush is already set to uh, uh, have an opacity jitter. So we come in here and we do that all the way around. We get lighter, lighter, lighter where the highlight is, and we get darker again when we come up into the shadow. And we do the same thing on this side. Darker up here. And we come down the center of the eye. Brighter, 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 darker, 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 brighter, and darker as we go up. And that's going to give us the impression, if we, especially if we make these sort of radial uh, strokes with it, it's going to give the impression of the sort of spokes in your eye, in your eye iris. If you ever looked at an iris really closely, you have these sort of streaks and spokes and things um, that are actually the tiny little muscle fibers that make your iris 
dilate and close. I'm going to round out this pupil a little bit here. And widen this one here. And now that I've done that, what I come in now and do is in this highlight here, where the light is actually striking the iris, it's also hitting the opposite side of the lens. So if you think of your lens as being this um, sphere-ish ellipse thing, your light comes down, it hits here, crosses, and it hits on the back side as well, but it's opposite. It's opposite both through the center in the front and through the center going front to back. So the light comes, it hits here, crosses through the middle of the iris, and it hits here as well. I'm just going to make that bright. And we're going to actually follow the curve of the iris there as well. Same here. Cro hits here, crosses, and hits here as well. And it can be a little rough and irregular because, again, these are eyes. They're organic. They're rough. They're wiggly. Um, there's detail in there. And so that's basically, th what, three, four steps to make an eye. And uh, already it looks, I want, don't want to say realistic, but it looks alive. Like this eye looks a lot better than it did even just a couple minutes ago. Um, just from doing those three steps. And if you look at, you know, and, and this is, you know, this is sort of a realistic style. This is not a cartoon style of eye. But these elements I actually first encountered in cartoons. Uh, so if you look at like an anime eye, you've got, uh, you know, your, your eye, right? And the iris here. And what they'll do is instead of doing this with shading, they'll just draw this in as shapes of color. So you'll have your iris. And you'll have um, sort of the highlight here, another highlight here. You'll have a dark color on this side. Here, and you'll have your, of course, your black iris there. And that's oftentimes how they will draw eyes and if you back that off you know that reads you know very shiny and wet and the same principle applies when you're doing a more real realistic eye as well um, and that's you know just basically three colors you've got uh, three colors plus black you know you've got your dark color you've got your iris color and then you've got your white for your highlights uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and save this. Uh, I'm going to save this as a PSD, actually. Hold on. Because I don't want to lose uh, detail from compression. Say, nope. Shoot. Save as PSD. Um, right. So we've got our we've got our eyes. Now the rest of our face needs uh, needs some needs some stuff. So a uh, similar kind of principle applies. We're gonna do some shading and highlighting. Uh, we're gonna be we're gonna make our brush nice and big for this part. 
And I'm going to take our opacity back down to 20%. So one thing is um, we can put some shading in here at the edge of, I don't remember from anatomy what this part of the eye is called, the upper part, but it's part of the orbit. Um, it's sort of this fatty pad right above our eyes that protects, uh, the, holds the eye in place and covers up the muscle and covers up the bone that forms the orbit of the eye. Um, so that's always going to have a little bit of a shadow right here where it turns the corner. Um, we're also going to put some shadow in right here by the corner of the eyelid. I'm not actually going to give this person a divided eyelid. I'm going to give them sort of a monolid. Uh, but I am going to shade this part where, because our light source again is coming here, so this part where it's closest to the light source is going to be brightest and it's going to turn a shadow as it turns the corner. Um, and we're going to have a little bit of a shadow here under the eye, but it's going to be very, very, very light because we're going to have stuff coming off of our nose here that's going to give us a different plane. It's going to be in highlight. Uh, and then we just do kind of the opposite on this side. On this side we'll make our fatty pad. Um, we're going to keep it rounded, but we're going to make it a little bit darker instead of being in highlight. And we're still going to have a shadow here, but the shadow is going to be between the eye and the nose. And we're going to have more of a shadow here on this side of the eye, where it comes down and goes out onto the side of the face. Now, uh, we'll just fill in the shadow here on the bottom of the nose. I'm going to come in with the eraser and uh, add some uh, definition here. Now, something I never really noticed until uh, recently when I started paying attention to how other artists did this. Um, our noses, generally speaking, are sort of blushing. They're a little bit darker than the rest of our face, um, but they've got a lot of highlight on them. So I'm going to go ahead and just color in this nose ever so slightly. We're going to kind of give us a bit of definition here. I'm actually going to go back that off and do that again because I was not happy with it. Um, this part here at the top of the nose is going to be shadowed uh, where it goes into the eye because uh, generally speaking that part of the nose is a little bit convex, uh, concave, and then it goes convex when it goes down on the arch. Um, so this part here is going to be shadowed a little bit. Just on that a little bit. Then the darkest part of the nose is going to be down here at the bottom. And I'm going to make my brush nice and broad so I can kind of do this in rough. Very rough. Okay, and then a little bit darker on this side than on this side. Now, we come in we find the highlights on the nose, so sort of the parts that are closest to us and closest to the light source. So it's going to be right here on the tip of the nose, a little bit on you know the edges of the of the, the round parts of the nose, and we'll kind of give that a little bit of definition that way. And then just whoop getting brighter highlight as it go toward the tip. And I'm using the eraser for this, but you can use a brush with just your background color if that's or a highlight color if you're doing this in color as opposed to uh as opposed to monochrome. And I might do a little bit of an extra highlight here on where the bridge of the nose would be. And that's given us some definition right there in our nose. And I'm going to come back down and do a little bit more highlight right there. And I'm going to come back in and obliterate some of that because it's not quite what I wanted. All 
there. Good enough. Um, make that darker and draw in the nostrils. That'd be kind of there. And draw in that shadow. Now on this side of the lip, uh, sorry, we're going to put a shadow here in the filtrum, and then a little bit of shadow here on this side of uh, above the lip. Not too much, just a little bit, and some shadows here falling from the from the nose onto the rest of the face. I'm going to put shadows on the lip itself, especially the upper lip will be darker than the lower lip because again, the lip comes in this way and then out this way. So this part here is always going to be in shadow and this part here is going to have more highlight on it. If your light is coming from the top as it is here. There's a little bit more this way. And I'm going to bring in some shadows from the chin up to here. And some shadows on the end of the chin itself. But we're going to round that out a little bit even more. There's a bit of a dimple. There's a little bit of shadow there as well. And especially there's shadow below the lip. Now we come into the cheeks and we'll do just a little shape of a blush, kind of triangular or trapezoidal. Do that for both cheeks, especially this one, where we'll actually just shade the face even a little bit more. I'm going to back that off even more. Very gently erase some of this because as making this even a little bit too dark. But now, now that we've got um, some dark areas to work with, we can put in the bright areas of our cheeks, the sort of apples of the cheeks. And that's going to, we're going to have our highlights right here. Whoop! I'm using the wrong thing. You're using the brush instead of the eraser. Alright, so we're going to have our highlights on the highest part of the cheekbone, right? And we're going to make those blend out. Toward the sort of muscle that goes from the side of the nose to the cheek. And same over here. Here it's a little bit harder to see because I've screwed up the uh, contrast a little bit on the side of the face. Oh well. Redraw that lip definition here. Brow bone? Oh, yeah, is that what that's called? I again it's been it's been a while since I've since I've done anatomy. 
uh, formally speaking. I'm going to put in just a little bit of shadow on this side of the face. Could bring that in a little bit more. And we're going to pop that highlight in there. There's going to be just a tiny bit of highlighting on this side of the face where it reflects uh, ambient light from the environment as well. That's slightly different. This highlight that I just did here, that would be in whatever your background color is if you were doing this in color instead of monochrome. Because what's happening is your light source is hitting the person, but it's also hitting the background, and then that's reflecting back onto the person this way and then reflecting to your eyes. Um, so you get a little bit of definition there as well. Which means the darkest part of your shadow is actually not quite at the edge of the shape of the face. I'm going to fill in the ears a bit here. Make that look a little bit more similar on either side of the face. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring my line back up to 50% opacity. And I'm going to start giving, uh, start doing a bit more with the definition and things. I'm going to draw in the shadow, the outline of the shadow here. That's another trick from old cartoons and things. Draw back in that outline of the lip and the filtrum here. These little dimples on the sides. Very, very gently. Add a little bit of fat going on there. Um, and just a little bit of highlighting there. All right, now we're going to add a little more shadow to the upper lip and a tiny bit of shadow to the lower lip. Because the lips generally are going to be darker than the rest of the face, unless you're wearing like really bright uh, lipstick. Um, and now, to make the lips look wet, I'm going to add highlight. And I'm going to, instead of blending it out like I do on the cheek, which makes it look sort of softer and rounder, um, if you want to make something look wet, you give it a sharp, small highlight. And if you want to make something look more matte uh, finish, you give it a broader, um, fuzzier highlight uh, and generally not as bright um, as you would get on the gloss finish. So here I'm just going to take the sort of middle of the lips and I'm going to make them bright. I'm going to especially uh, give them sort of two highlights here on either side of this uh, sort of dividing line down the middle of the lips. Uh, someone with full lips you'll see generally has on the top lip, you'll have three sections. You'll have, uh, you know, sort of the left side, then you'll have a uh, sort of triangular section under the middle and the right side. And on the bottom lip, you'll only have two sections that are sort of plump. You'll have the right side and left side. I'm even going to make the lips extend out a little bit further here, or rather bring them in a little bit more on the top ever so slightly. Uh, 
All right. Now we're going to add just a little bit of shadow to the forehead because we would like to make a highlight up there uh, as well. Very, very lightly. I'm even going to go down to 10% on my opacity. Uh, uh, come in closer here and here. Come in a little bit of shadow as it goes around the corner toward the back of the head. There. And now we come in and we just give a little bit of a a little bit of a hit right here in the center of the face. Center of the forehead rather. Of highlight. Right, uh, right across, right across. I'm gonna come back in on this side of the face and give us back a little bit of our definition here that we lost. And now I'm gonna proceed to give us some shadowing here on the neck. We're gonna find sort of the edge of the neck here where it would sort of blend out into the musculature here. We'll find the edge here where it comes around. And again, sort of with circularish strokes, finding the, the curvature here. And we'll draw the shadow of the chin line like so. And we're going to knock this back a little bit with like that. Again, sort of round strokes to keep this kind of looking rounded. Okay. Now we make our brush small and we go in and we work on some details again. I'm going to Define the eyebrows a bit more. Bump that back up to 50%. Again, I'm going to keep eyebrows generally pretty angular. That looks a bit more expressive to me. It's not naturalistic per se, but um, keeping them a bit more angular kind of it gets the point across. And here I'm actually going to add a little bit of shadow to where that uh, brow bone, as Cassandra was saying, kind of comes in and turns the corner. And again, a little bit of shadow on this side of the eye as well. And in this case, over here on this side of the eye. As it turns the corner going backwards. And a little bit more right here on the edge of the nose. Just bump that back somewhat so it doesn't look quite as much like a bruise. Oops. Whoops. Kind of messed with the nose a bit there. And we're going to give a little bit of highlighting here where we've got sort of a smile things going on. Lift up the face. Here. Yeah. 
I'm just going to grab the, with the color picker tool, I'm just going to grab the color of the face in this area, kind of smooth it out a little bit. Smooth it out a little bit. Once again, we're going to give some definition to the chin here. The chin is going to have a highlight kind of more in the front, and the shadow is not going to begin until it turns the corner because the chin is kind of flat-ish in the front. And now we come back in and we give ourselves some outlines here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make the outlines darker and thicker particularly thicker um, whoops uh, where they are further out ahead of whatever's behind them and thinner where stuff comes a bit closer to them And that's something that's known as uh, line depth. So if you look on, especially uh, pure black and white drawings, like you'll see in uh, manga, comic books, uh, anime, things like that, uh, generally thick lines will indicate that there's more space behind whatever that line is outlining, and thinner lines will indicate that there's something a bit closer to it, or it's um, it's uh, it's not quite as a sharp uh, a curve. You know, going away from your eye. So you can see my lines get thicker as we go out toward the chin, thinner as we come in but toward the neck, and then thicker again as we uh, define the the ch the the chin itself, like in the middle, uh, protruding away from the neck. And we're going to make the lines of the neck a little bit li lighter and a little bit broader because they are behind our foreground. They're on the next plane, and I want them to look a little bit more indistinct. So they're broader, and they're a little bit lighter, generally speaking. Same here. Here I'm not going to pay too much attention to the ears. Just give them a little bit more definition, and we're going to draw the corner, the you know, so the the the, the shape of the ear as it comes around the front as well, and spirals around, spirals around, comes around the front, spirals around. Now, I could just leave it here. I've left the hair kind of indistinct. Um, what I think I will do is I will add just a little bit of shading to it to kind of indicate where it is. Especially over here. Person has fairly short hair apparently. And that allows us to, now that we've got sort of shadowing, we can kind of knock in some basic highlights in the hair. And again, it's going to look kind of indistinct. It's not really the most important part of this picture. And so, because it's kind of indistinct, we'll sort of get the idea, but our eyes will be drawn not to the hair itself, which is, again, it's not. It's not really the focus of our picture, but instead it will be drawn uh, 
down. To uh, I don't like that. I'm gonna go back. Back, 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 back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. There. I do want to bring in the hair on that side like it is on this side, coming down in front of the ears. But it's not nearly as important. back up even more than that. So we'll leave the hair nice and indistinct uh, on top of the head. And that's going to draw our attention not to here, but it's going to draw it right to our eyes. Uh, and then from the eyes, it's going to go down the nose, following the highlight. And we're going to see lots of contrast under the nose, and we're going to follow that down to the, to the mouth. Uh, and then from there, we'll sort of follow the edge of the chin and the neckline and so forth. But the eyes are going to be the main focus of this picture. Uh, let me just add a little touch more showing there on the lips. No, I don't like that. That's better. That's better. All right, so we save this. Uh, and now I'm just going to um, I'm going to put my signature somewhere in here. Uh, probably here looks good. Zero, one, six. And we save that. And uh, that's good. And I'm going to put this, post this up on my Tumblr. Um, so you can take a look. Uh, there are going to be, there's uh, links to that underneath the video here, and uh, if you're watching on YouTube uh, later on, uh, there are links on my uh, on my channel page as well to my Tumblr. I'm there as cute spaceships. Uh, .tumblr .com. Uh, my art tag is just slash art. After that, um, I take commissions as well. My commission info is going to be uh, on my Tumblr header. Uh, and that works on mobile now, which is great. Um, and uh, I have a Twitter. It's uh, the underscore adrift. Uh, so it's twitter.com slash the underscore adrift. Um, where I post and retweet and ramble and just generally have not much of a brand at all. Uh, but you can fo follow me there uh, for updates on things um, and, and such like. Uh, but that that's it for tonight. Uh, thanks for sticking around. This went, well, 10.30. This went much longer than I was anticipating. This is only going to be a short half-hour sketch, but I guess I kind of lost track of time. Uh, thanks for bearing with me. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you like the art, and uh, we will see you around. Thanks very much for coming, and have a great evening.